Okay, guys, so just to introduce ourselves again. So my name is Thomas Fraser Bacon. I'm the marketing director here at Allsea. I'm joined today with, uh, by my colleague, Dean Hancox. He's our lead CMS support advisor. Um, Dean looks after a lot of the you know, customer facing CMS technical support. Uh, obviously we do have other advisors as well. Uh, we've got a growing team of technical support engineers. Uh, Dean's probably the, the, the most kind of familiar with the CMS and most involved in the, the, the actual development based on user feedback. Um, so yeah, that's who we are and what we do. So um, the first thing we're gonna do guys, a lot of you will already be familiar with this. So I'm not gonna go too in depth. I just wanna quickly run through our, our kind of all in one approach. Um, so typically, you know, a, a digital signage project would comprise of a commercial display, a piece of software and a media player to run that software. Our solutions tend to be an all-in-one system that comprises of all those things from one source. Obviously, that means that they're easier to promote, easier to understand, easier to install, easier to maintain, and I suppose most importantly for the end user, easier to use. Um, so yeah, that, I just want to kind of quickly kind of cover that really. Um, so in terms of how the actual system works, you'll see there's a, there's a graphic there. Again, this is this is mainly for, for new users, really, and partners who aren't familiar with the system. So um, obviously, the screen itself would be connected to the Internet. Um, that can be through the customer's Wi-Fi or LAN uh, for a more stable, uh, consistent connection where possible. Um, if, if, if there's no Internet available, obviously, we can provide 4G solutions. Once the screen is connected to the Internet, it points to our CMS server. The CMS software itself can obviously be accessed um, by the user through my signage portal, and then therefore things can be uploaded and sent to the screens uh, through the portal. So there's a small graphic on the right hand corner there that kind of visually describes that. Um, so yeah, just to kind of very briefly and quickly cover that. Um, so let's start going through the recent updates that we've had before we kind of get into the, the actual CMS um, demo itself. So. Obviously, the biggest one um, and the most noticeable is last July, we actually launched the beta version of our new user interface. So the main question is why? Why did we do this? So the first reason, obviously, it gives a, a refresh uh, of the overall aesthetic, and cleaner, and more modern style. So as you know, based on a lot of feedback and as we were aware previously, the old user interface was starting to look very dated and very kind of like, you know, Windows 97, uh, if you like. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was still quite user friendly, in, you know, in terms of workflow, but it was starting to look very, very outdated. So, you know, to give that kind of, to stay competitive uh, visually with other platforms, obviously that was quite an important uh, decision to make as well. Um, obviously it was to optimize the efficiency for users by making the workflow uh, more as, as understandable as possible, but also as familiar as possible based on, on, on user behavior. Also, the most important thing for us was to create a sustainable framework to continually add new features to. So our previous user interface was developed um, quite a few years ago, uh, about six years ago. Um, so there was a lot of kind of the actual framework itself was, was, was quite outdated. So it only allowed us to, to go so far in terms of feature development. Um, whereas obviously that's, that's been a, a primary focus um, for, for our, new, um, our new UI is to kind of have a platform that we can continually add uh, new features to. So let's go through um, the, the actual things that we've launched since since we released the new UI. Uh, some of the features that we've that we've had. So first one is obviously the customization of branding. So this has been one of the most requested fe features over the years. So you can actually change the color scheme it itself and the logo that once you've actually logged in, um, your cust you, you can change this and all your customers can have the same one under your kind of account. Or if you if you allow them to, each of your customers can do this uh, individually as well. Again, the, the controls uh, in your hands really. Um, the next one is perfect synchronization. Now, although this isn't um, a, a feature specific to the the CMS platform itself, and it it, it kind of shows uh, one of the advantages of having a hardware and a software um, kind of marriage, if you like, uh, and the fact that the the hardware is continually developed as as well as the firmware. Uh, alongside the software itself that allows a lot more control it allows for things like a synchronization of screens which you can kind of see behind me uh, in the background here uh, you know a lot more a lot more accurate so we've actually minimized the perceived lag to 0 0.042 seconds so cost effective and, and easy video wall effects can be created for you know things like menu boards and like I say what you can kind of see behind me uh, the next thing was a, a playback log uh, that we launched in October last year we previously had a very basic version of this. Uh, now um, you can export daily reports showing how many times a particular piece of media has been displayed, 
the total duration in seconds, etc. Obviously, for for projects that in, in, involve advertising, this is obviously very, a very important feature. Um, the next thing was advanced remote control. Now, again, uh, users of our, our software will will know that we've always had a level of uh, you know remote control. You've been able to stop and play the content, format the internal memory. Uh, we actually added um, a few other features. So things like changing the orientation, changing the time and date settings, even configuring the synchronization settings can now be done remotely. So all those things that you know that you couldn't do remotely, you can as long as the screen's online now, you know you've got full uh, remote control over the, that screen, and not just updating the content, but anything else you can kind of stand you do standing next to the screen with the remote. Um, one of the most recent ones that we that we launched in March was touchscreen analytics. Again, um, we've had feedback in the past. Um, from, from a lot of our partners who are working on projects that, that require um, analytics of, of, of interactive playlists. So, you know, what was touched, how many times was it touched, when was it touched, et cetera, uh, that, that's now available. So though, again, those logs can be exported and analyzed uh, externally as well. Um, we've done other kind of optimization and improvements like the video processing speed. We've added more cities to the weather, weather zone. Um, we've developed the template designer and lots of other kind of smaller bug fixes as well. So our software development team is, is expanding as has been hard at work, shall we say. Um, the next thing I'd like to discuss is what the next, uh, the, the future development, the upcoming um, features that, that we're actually developing at the moment. Uh, the next one will be a YouTube zone. So typically we would always kind of, if, if, if a customer wanted to, you know, display something from YouTube, we'd recommend uploading it from uh, to the portal, sending it to the screen. And while this is a more, stable and, and safe way of doing things you know the, the customer requirement is still there to, to stream videos from youtube so we are we are developing that and that will be available very soon uh, the next thing is api for third party hardware integration so again we get a lot of requests for projects that need sensors such as lift and learn so that will be available um, soon um, email subscription reminders so this is obviously this is more of an administrative thing but it, it, again we, we're just trying to automate the process of you know, when, when before subscriptions expire, uh, that you'll you know you'll get a reminder email, or your customer will get a reminder email, depending on how it's set up, uh, and and it just you know prevents any any issues where you know subscriptions expire and then a reconnection fees charged, etc. Uh, and just try and make that process as automated and as smooth as possible. Um, also, um, copying and paste other kind of very smaller optimization things, copying and pasting template zones, more system playlists, improving the overall speed and efficiency, and things like that. That'll be a continual kind of development. At this point, we will we will talk obviously at the end uh, and have a Q and A session after the demo. But at this point, I'd just like to to open things up and 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 ask anyone who who wants to unmute themselves or use the chat um, if they have any other suggestions for any other um, development features based on what they think the CMS could use. You know, requests they've had from end users. Um, you know. If anyone wants to kind of um, suggest anything, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, like I say, open the floor up now. Uh, again, we can do it later if people want to think on it a little bit. Um, so, yeah, does anyone have any other suggestions at this point? With all of these attendees and everyone's too nervous, too shy to speak up. That's fine. No, honestly, guys, um, if you... Um, Tom, I'll, I'll speak up. But one no, thing go for it, you, Stephen. Yeah, one thing you might want to look at is analytics. Yeah. They make up in your API integration, but analytics is, is, is where you're getting a return on investment and Definitely. proving what's being looked at and by whom and demographics and all the rest of it. Exactly. You're absolutely right, Stephen. That is definitely something that we're um, that we've got in the pipeline. Um, at the moment, obviously, there's a lot of reports that can be exported. But as you as you mentioned, the, the actual analytics side of the software is, is quite basic. So that is something we are we are actually developing as well in the background. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate that, Stephen. You're, you're absolutely right. That, that's a, that's a really important part for um, for the future development of the software, for sure. So really appreciate that feedback, Stephen. Um, we've got a, a question for Sebastian. Uh, translation to German or other languages planned? Again, yes, Sebastian, we do have that planned. Uh, that's in the pipeline as well um, to develop different different languages uh, for, for the software. Um, so yeah, that that will be coming um, hopefully this year. Um, so yeah, that that's definitely something that we've got in the pipeline as well. Uh, Michael, Swedish, yes, absolutely. Again, 
that will be kind of, I suppose, in, in, in terms of what order we, what, you know, we, we do it in terms of languages and which, which languages we add first will obviously be based on, on customer requirements. But yeah, I, I can certainly make sure that German and Swedish are, are high up on the list, definitely. Um, guys, if, um, if nobody else has any suggestions at this point, like I say, um, I, I, you know, feel free to make a note of them, ask in the chat and we can discuss them later or even, even you know, discuss them verbally when we get to the Q&A section later on. Um, so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to move on to the actual demonstration of the CMS platform itself. I, I didn't really go into much visually anyway, guys, to be honest. But yeah, um, here, here's the home page. I'm sure you'll all um, look at it separately on your own anyway. Um, the features page, as you can see very quickly, if you if you were familiar with the old website, um, it's it's quite a bit of an upgrade. Um, but thanks thanks for that game. So in terms of the support, again, FAQ section, um, the downloads and documents are for the user manual, um, the training uh, or support request um, just basically sends a support request uh, to us directly. Um, depending on how you guys want to handle the actual support, uh, more often than not, we'll provide that that technical support, um, plain label on behalf of, of you guys, our partners, to the end user and essentially let you know when everything's resolved uh, in most cases. Um, the most important part of the video tutorials, so um, everything that we're going to be covering today is covered in these video tutorials for the old classic user interface, as well as the separate videos for the new user interface as well. Um, so that that is a really useful tool, especially if someone wants to just um, learn about one particular feature or wants to remind themselves on how to do a particular feature, a uh, particular function. Uh, there's also now a contact page, so um, we, we potentially may be getting some, some inquiries through, uh, which, which we would anyway previously, but it would always be put through as a support request, so it was a bit strange. Um, so yeah, we've, we've added that function. Um, so guys, just to get stuck into the actual CMS demo itself now at this point, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Dean, uh, who's going to kind of run through the CMS itself. Uh, one thing that we won't be covering today is the touch playlists. We're going to actually host a separate session for that in a couple of months' time um, and to go more in-depth with that because that's kind of a separate part, really. Although it's kind of integrated within the same system, we feel that you know, some, some time needs to be dedicated to that to really kind of show what it can do. Um, so without any further ado, I'll hand over to Dean and, and let Dean give you a, a, a CMS run through. Let's get skip over that. Um, yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, some of you may have spoken to me before. If not, definitely your customers, anything related to the CMS, to be fair. Um, I usually kind of handle all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to simply log in and go from there. So I actually have a account that I created specifically for this, just called All C Webinar. Kind of has everything we need. It's got like the, you know, the screens behind me just so I can publish to them and stuff. You can see here, for example, I've already published to this one previously just to, you know, make sure everything's working. Um, so the only thing you guys need to do from here is basically, you, you know, if you don't already have password and username, they'll probably be for, uh, provided by the account manager. Obviously, you'll be able to create this for your end users as well, uh, for, for any of your customers, sorry. Um, and once you have sort of username and password, it's just a case of putting in the verification code that you see here. Um, and it's just for security purposes, uh, essentially. Um, so once you're logged in, um, just to clarify before, previously, when you logged in, it went to the old CMS, but you've noticed now it actually goes straight to the new one. So this was a, you know, a thing that we wanted to do as soon as possible now that we're happy with the new CMS actually kind of, you know, being pretty much out of beta at this point, to, to be fair. Maybe there's a few issues that we can, you know, resolve uh, over time, but mostly it's pretty much done for all uh, intents and purposes. Um, so I just want to quickly cover the homepage here. All I want to do is just kind of focus on this part here, which is pretty much all you really are going to be using it for. Uh, when you log in, you can actually see the status of your screens. So for example, right now, we actually have six that are connected to this account. There's like four behind me. There's one over there. And there's also one we have in a different room, just, you know, just for, for testing purposes and such. So you can see, for example, um, five of them are currently uh, in play. So the status play. So that literally means that they're playing content and that they're like online connected to their network, you know, whether it's through LAN or Wi-Fi, et cetera, uh, or mobile. And also um, it means that they're connected to our server, which means, you know, if you see this number next to pretty much the play icon here, you don't have to worry about anything. And we also can see here, there's one that says offline. So this is another status we can see just to get some more clarification on what's happening with the screen. So we know, for example, here, that this screen's not connected to our server 
maybe it's just not connected to the network, like the Wi-Fi network on site, or maybe it's just not on, which could be the case, which it is in a, in a lot of cases, really. But the five that we see here are basically just all behind me. Um, so what we're going to cover here, first of all, is we're going to go to Rapid, and this is the most common uh, way people use the CMS, to be honest. Um, Usually people already have their content designs already. Like for example, we have that, you know, we have that for this for the session here. Um, so it's just the case of pretty much uploading the content and then getting it onto, onto the screen. So like you see behind me, for example. So um, the rapid uh, feature here pretty much just goes through three steps. So we have like choose templates, we have playlist, and then we also have publish. So it's, it's fairly simple to use. It is generally just clicking one thing or two things and then kind of moving on to the next stage. So for the first uh, step, it says choose template. So it's pretty much, we only have these two at the moment. We do plan on adding a lot more over time, but these two are pretty much just used for like videos, images, you know, any kind of content like that. Um, so for this example, we're just going to literally publish to this screen here. So obviously because it's, it's portrait or, or vertical, we're just going to choose that template. So I'm going to left click it. I'm going to press next at the top, and that's going to pretty much take me over to, to the second step called the playlist step. And um, as you imagine, this is the step where you kind of put all the content and stuff onto it. So to do this, we have this big sort of green sort of area here, and we call this a video zone. So this is pretty much where we can put our videos, images, uh, et cetera, all our content here. Um, so there's two ways to do this. First of all, we can double left click the background here, or we can press add media, whichever way you prefer. I prefer double left clicking because you'll see why later on, but it's a lot faster to do when you have multiple sort of zones on the playlist. So if I double left click this, It'll bring up my sort of media folder and you can actually see already i've got quite a lot of uh, files that i've uploaded you know just just for to, to, to sort of demonstrate this um, however what we're going to do is we're actually going to upload something new just so you can see how this works so if i press the upload button here it'll say here click or drag and drop a file to upload so you can either just kind of dra drag it directly from your you know your folder on your uh, windows file explorer or mac for example or you can just press this area It'll bring up, you know, your your file explorer, as I was saying, and then you pretty much just go from here of selecting the images. So you can see here, for example, unlike my desktop, I've just got these two images that are, you know, we're just using, for example. Um, so if I want to upload these onto our system, I'm pretty much going to, you know, drag over here or select either one, press open at the bottom here, and then that's going to start. Oops, let me go back to that. Apologies about that. <laughs> and that's going to start uploading onto our system. So you can see. It happens so fast, we didn't even get a chance to see it really. Um, it, you know, it uploads automatically, so you kind of don't really need to worry about, you know, doing anything else. Um, unlike the old system where you kind of have to like do a, little, like a few extra things. Um, but you can see now, these two have now been added to here. So all we need to do now is just select these two to be used onto the playlist. So we can just left click the areas here. It kind of shows like a little tick box for each of them. Press OK, and you'll see how it kind of fills that area now. Um, so the way I've got this now is I've got two images. So um, typically what this will do is it'll just kind of loop through both those images. And it's always default as 10 seconds. That's just the default that we do with like default transitions, et cetera. However, there's a few things we can change about them. So for this demonstration, just to make it you know quicker so we don't have to waste too much time, I'm going to change the duration, which you can see for the first image here. I'm going to change this to three seconds. And then I'm going to leave the second one as 10. So what I'm going to do here is if I press preview, this will give us an idea of actually how this should look on the screen. So just right now, all you can see is a sort of static image of just the, the second you know, image that we have here. But if we press preview, we can actually see kind of how this looks. So we'll see after three seconds, transitioned over to the second image here. And then after 10 seconds, he'll go back to the first one and he'll just continue looping that over and over. Um, Obviously, you can add, you know, as many images, as many videos as you want to this, to this sort of video zone here. I, I think um, it's more of a case of seeing if our content management solution is what you need. That's a good question. No, no, I think I think it's just that I'm not muted. Um, so I, I do. Yes. Right, please. There we go. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, just to carry on. Um, yeah, so you can add as many images, videos, etc., as possible to the playlist. I mean, we don't really, there's no limit that I know of, at least it's pretty much some people just put like 10, 20, 10 images on there. Um, but after we've done this, what we're going to do is press next. That's going to bring us to the final step. And this is pretty much where we just publish to the screen. So as you can see, step three, publish. Um, so all we need to do for this is pretty much just go to the bottom here, 
and you'll see all the different screens that are associated with your account. So as I was mentioning earlier, I have six in total. One of them is offline, as you can see, and then the rest of these are actually online and playing, as we can see by the little sort of uh, you know play icon here. So if I choose the one to the right of me here, or maybe to the left of you. <laughs> so if I press, uh, if I click that uh, screen there, I'm just going to press publish at the top right here, press OK. And then after a certain amount of time, it depends on how, how big the content is, obviously. It shouldn't take too long because it's just you know two very small images. But essentially, this is going to change. There you go. It's already done um, to, to what I've just published. So if you could just about see, I know it's kind of in the corner, but you can see that it's, it does change. It's going to do this one for 10 seconds and then go to the next one and pretty much do exactly what we, you know, we created. Um, so that's pretty much you know, the basic way of, of getting content onto the screen. As I mentioned, a lot of people will design their stuff you know, through Photoshop, Illustrator, or, or whatever software they use. So they kind of only need to really access that feature. However, there is, you know, there is other ways we can do this, and this is kind of the template area. So I'm going to cover that in a second. But first of all, I just want to go into media so we can just kind of move our way down the list um, and just talk a little bit about this area. So first of all, um, this wasn't also on the old version. On the new version, you can actually add folders now, which a lot of people requested, um, which allows you to organize the images and videos a lot better. Um, you know, it was a very widely requested feature, so we kind of wanted to add it. So it's quite useful for that. So, you know, you could put all these images here, the, the ones that are, you know, separate from this into that folder just to keep them organized. Um, and another thing worth mentioning as well is you can upload as much stuff as you like. There's no limit. Um, you know, some CMS platforms will have restrictions where at a certain, you know, amount of images or videos you've got on there, it will restrict you and you might have to, like, you know, pay extra costs or, you know, Add, add on to the uh, subscription. But with ours, you literally can just upload as much stuff as you want. There's, there's no limit. Um, just feel free to, to you know, use it for that, for that purpose. Um, so uh, you can also add uh, for this, uh, sorry, you can add uh, pictures, videos, you can add uh, Word documents, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF. So there's quite a lot of different formats you can use to you know, uh, get, get content onto the screen pretty much. And you can also actually add RSS feeds as well. Some people will know what these are. Um, they're quite useful if people do use them. Um, you can just have like a ticker that kind of goes across the bottom of the screen maybe, and it just kind of shows you the news of like BBC, uh, you know, or Sky Sports or whatever it is. Um, some people like using them on like reception screens, stuff like that, so they're quite useful. Um, but you can see we've got quite a few formats you can use. So, you know, it doesn't have to just be like pictures and videos. Um, so what we'll do now is if we move on to the part we were talking about earlier with the, with the, with the templates, so, as I was mentioning, in Rapid, you use kind of use that pretty much just to put your content that you've you know you've created in, in a third party software most of the time. However, you can um, kind of make the uh, playlist uh, more you know more individualized towards yourself and what you want to accomplish. So, for example, um, if I press Program Template here, you'll see here's the two system templates we used earlier. So we use this one specifically. Um, but instead, we can actually create our own and have different sort of, you know, different zones instead of just having this full screen video zone here. So if I press user templates, you can actually see I've got one here that I just, you know, just used earlier just to, to practice and such. Um, so if I press add, and what I'll do is I'll give it a name. So I'll call it webinar two since I've already got webinar one. Um, the next thing you'd say is resolution. So again, just like the system template, we're just choosing whatever the resolution is of you know, the playlist that we want to make for the screen. So again, ours is you know, portrait, so we want to use that. So press OK. And then what we get is this kind of, a, you know, this blank sort of canvas page of, of where we can start adding our zones. Uh, at the moment, you know, as I said, completely blank, nothing on there yet. Uh, and then you know, we, we're free to sort of start adding the things that we want. So. Um, fortunately enough, one of our marketing guys has created a really nice, uh, a really nice playlist for us. So we're just going to show you how to do that. You saw it early on the screen before we did the rapid demo. So I'm pretty much just going to do that um, from scratch, so you can kind of see how it works. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, we're just going to go through these zones, and we're just going to kind of place them onto this sort of canvas, as I mentioned. So we start with background. Click this button. We get the option either to add a background color or we can add a background picture. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to add media here. It's going to open up our media folder again, like earlier. And then we're just going to pretty much add, uh, you know, the, the actual, uh, the background that we want to add. So I think we have it here at the bottom. Here we go. So if I choose this, press OK, press OK again, you'll see that it's kind of changed and it's kind of, you know, fit this background where we've actually kind of, 
cut out these sections here so we can kind of fit them with other zones. So you can see how it's kind of like a, you know, like a layering system where we can add different zones to the areas. Um, so the next thing we could do is add a video zone. So I actually have specific uh, uh, X and Y and height and width here that I can put in. That fits that area exactly, because otherwise I'm just trying to guess exactly where it will be. So if you give me a minute here, um, I've got it right here. So this is 240. So while Dean's doing that, um, guys, I'll just explain. So uh, Dean did briefly mention, but what, what, what's happened here is the we've designed a, uh, a layout in Photoshop first, uh, obviously with different layers. And what Dean's now doing is kind of, you know, translating that into the CMS, um, it, you know, essentially adding each layer. Uh, but obviously, once we're, once we're able to create it in the CMS, we can make it a kind of dynamic um, layout with, with different zones and all, you know, independent from one another um, and make it a lot more interesting, uh, and which, which obviously you'll see the, the, the finished result of in just a few minutes. So yeah, uh, as you can see, I've, I've just added a video zone. I've put it in that you know exact area that we you know designed specifically, and I've also added an image zone as well. So this is a bit different from the video zone, as you can imagine from the name of it. Um, so pretty much the video zone allows you to add like you know all those kind of different formats we showed uh, earlier on, whilst the image zone just pretty much allows you to to add images. Um, so you know you can kind of use whichever fits your purpose. Um, also, we can go to scrolling text here. So we actually got a little section at the bottom here where we can fit this. So what I'm going to do actually is, again, another feature we didn't have on the old CMS is the ability to zoom in to get more sort of pixel perfect uh, on this. So you can see, I can actually kind of fit this right where, they, where I want it to be. Um, just makes it so much easier to be able to do those things, you know, make it look so much nicer, um, uh, just in general, really. Um, Next of all, um, we have the logo zone. We don't have one, you know, we already have one here, so we're not going to use that. But pretty much the purpose of this is just to, you can put like a, a logo in the corner, uh, you know, exactly like this here. Um, it kind of just fits over the top, always over the top of everything. It's like the topmost layer. Um, you can pretty much use it for that. But you can also just add it to the background if, if you want to design it that way. Um, we also have uh, little, little tiny widgets as well. You know, we've got like uh, uh, video, uh, sorry, uh, time and day here, for example. So if I just move those down here at the bottom, you can see we can add that right there. And then also what we're going to do is we're going to add a weather zone. So these are just very common, you know, widgets that you'll get with quite a lot of platforms. Um, there's a few things you can change about them as well. So if I just hide this part here, we can see on the right, there's a section called property editing. And we can actually change like, you know, quite a few things about them, like the font style. Uh, we can actually change like the color, color of how it looks and such. So I'm going to do that, for example, because we actually have a uh, color scheme. So Dean, Dean's just entering a, a hex code now, um, obviously based on a specific color that we that we want to use. Um, again, he's going to do it for all these zones. Um, so while he's doing that, I'll just explain, obviously, the purpose of that is obviously so that your customers can enter their own uh, hex code based on their own corporate branding. Um, so so the um, it's fully, fully flexible in that sense. Uh, and I will mention as well, in just a second, Dean's going to enter uh, a static text zone. If any of your customers have got any specific fonts, corporate fonts specifically, uh, that they want to use in the static tech zone, uh, let us know. Uh, and we can, we can most likely, we can integrate those as part of the software itself. Yeah. So as you were saying, um, this one here is called the static tech zone. So I'm just going to put that right here. And the reason for that is so we can add a number to this later on. So um, if we say, okay, we're happy with this. I think we've got everything that we've covered. Um, there is one thing we're going to add later on, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that in a second. However, for the rest of these zones here, we don't need to worry too much. Um, we do have, um, just to add to this, we do have the ability to add the website zones as well. So you can actually put like a full screen URL of any website you want on here, or you could just kind of section it off in the corner, like maybe a Twitter feed, something like that. Some people use it for, for that effect. Um, and also you can notice as well, we actually have started adding YouTube uh, zone to here. It still needs, uh, you know, it still needs a bit more refining, but it's pretty much ready from what we understand. So, you know, if you wanted to use that, you could kind of go ahead and use that. Um, and, you know, like Tom mentioned earlier, pretty much just kind of cuts out the, the point of adding a website zone, adding the YouTube URL and then doing like loads of different things. Instead, you can literally just add the, the YouTube zone and just put in the URL and it just pretty much plays the video. Um, so it's quite useful. Um, so what we're going to say here is I'm happy with how my template looks. This looks great. Um, everything's where I want it to be. So I'm going to press save and use at the top. 
And this is actually going to bring us to, oops, get rid of that. This is actually going to bring us to the uh, playlist area. So just like in the rapids, this was kind of step two. So if you take the, the last step we did, that was step one. This is kind of step two. So if I call, uh, call this playlist, uh, webinar playlist two, for example, um, what we can do now is we can start adding content. So as I mentioned earlier, I think it's easy to double left click the different zones because you can see how faster it is. So if I double left click this, I can kind of add my images to this area. So if I choose the ones that we have here, um, I might actually have to do this just to get more of the, the images on here. So if we just select all these, for example, we can add all these to that zone and they'll kind of do that like slideshow effect that we saw earlier, or we see right now on the screen. Um, so press OK. And those are all pretty much added there now. Same for the video zone. Just, this, uh, just like earlier, we just instead we're going to this time actually add a video. So if we go to the video um, sort of tab here, we can actually choose the video we've uploaded previously. So if I press OK on that, you can see it kind of fits that area. And obviously, as I mentioned, because we have like the exact sort of uh, width for the height that we've created just as fits, you know, perfectly in this area. It's going to look really good on the screen. Um, another thing you can see here is you can see the, the static text that we did. So the reason for this is we actually just want to add literally the number two. And then we, what we want to do is we want to change the font style. Uh, sorry, sorry. So if we change this to, let's say here, I think that's about right. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the color. So just like we did earlier, we're literally just going to change the color so it matches the theme. So that's the same. And then last of all, you can try to change the, uh, you know, the, the way we, uh, justification. The yeah. What's called justification? Yeah. <laughs> alignment. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the alignment. So you can see it kind of fits there quite nice. Find us on level two. You know, if you ever needed to change that to different, you know, to three or four or maybe one. Um, you could kind of just use the template and just change what you need to change instead of having to do it all again from scratch. And that's kind of the purpose of that. Um, and then last of all is, is the scrolling text. So I've got something here I could type. So extended opening hours. Uh, and then we, oops, I spelled that wrong there. We are open until 10 p.m. So uh, as we was mentioning before, this is the scrolling text area, which is different from the static. So pretty much in this area, we'll be able to sort of have text scroll, uh, scroll across the screen in any direction we want. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. By the way, guys, if you did want to use the scrolling text zone for an RSS feed, obviously, here's where you'd actually kind of put the RSS feed in. Uh, Dean mentioned in the media section, that's where you'd actually set the RSS feed up. Here's where you'd actually add it to the scrolling text zone. Oh, actually, for this one. This one's white. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this one needs to be white. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll make it go a bit faster as well. So it goes across the bottom quicker and then we'll kind of leave that as it is. Cool, okay. So we've pretty much done most of the things so far. Um, one other thing I want to add is, um, on the again, on the old version of CMS, you can edit the playlist or, or I guess the template of the playlist after you create it. Um, this was quite a big, uh, you know, a big thing where, you know, a lot of people really wanted to be able to do this. So we've, we basically, this was the first thing I think we actually added to the new CMS. So you can see here, I've actually opened up this little box here and that actually opens all the zones. So you can actually edit individual um, sort of playlists to be more specific as well, if you like. So I've actually added a transparent image zone here, which is Similar to an image zone, except as you, you imagine, it's transparent. So as you can see, what this will allow us to do is I can put this transparent image directly over the top of this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of uh, thing we've set up here. And you can see how it actually looks really nice, how it, you know, fits everything in between. So it looks like, it really does look like there's layers to this instead of it just being, you know, very static and just kind of squared off and stuff. Like you can see how this rope goes across the top. Obviously we have this in the way. So this looks, you know, this looks really nice uh, when you put it on the screen, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so the last thing I want to do is if we press preview at the top, we actually get an idea of how this looks. So we can see before we publish it, Apologies about the music, if you can hear that. <laughs> but you can see we've got the scrolling text across the bottom. We've got like, you know, we've got our text here. We've got the images kind of playing here. We also have the video. So, you know, for, for what we can see here, it looks good. Everything's ready. So all we need to do now is just like before, just publish it to the screen. So if I press save, wait for this to save, save successfully. So we're just going to press publish now. And then just like before, same kind of similar concept. We can choose the screen behind me. And then we can press publish. I just want to talk about as well. I won't go into too much detail. However, a lot of people, you know, do use this for sort of restaurants and stuff like that. You can schedule playlists um, at specific times. So you can see that part here. This is actually the control for that. 
So for example, if I change this to custom, you can actually see how we have this kind of time, uh, time, I guess, kind of line figure here. Um, I don't really know what to call it actually, but yeah, you can see how we can kind of edit, you know, when we want this playlist to be spe uh, specifically published to the screen. Um, and you could do this for so many different playlists that you want. And you know, a good example of this, as I was mentioning with like restaurants and stuff, is people will have like a breakfast menu at like nine till twelve or nine till eleven, and then at you know eleven or twelve onwards they'll actually have a lunch menu. And this just allows them to publish all this in advance and not have to worry about you know do, doing it like specifically having to go back into the system, do it, and then you know set up the times each time. You know, it's it's just annoying and. You know, it's it's, not, it's something that you kind of want to avoid, right? You want it to be as easy as possible. So that's pretty much what that area is used for. So if I just press publish now at the top, press OK. Um, it might take a little bit longer than the previous one because we had that video on there. And we also had like, it was like 20 oh, images. Oh, OK. That was very fast. Um, that, that makes it look even better, I guess. Um, but as you can see, exactly as I've just created it, you know, you have the you know, RSS feed at the bottom. You have uh, you know the video zones, the image zones, kind of going through all of them. We also have the text, so yeah, that's pretty much how, how it looks on there anyway. Um, and you can see pretty much how easy it is when you you know you kind of have a plan set up. Um, the only other things we can we'll cover here is and we'll go won't go too much into detail. Of these, if we go into player area, we can see this is where all our screens are. So as you can see, the one I just published to is this one here, but freestanding 50 inch, and that's you know literally the name of the screen here. Um, you can see like before this kind of area gives you an idea of what's happening with the screens and it also gives you the ability to kind of edit things about them so um you can see how it says play here on status so as, as we know it's playing so that you know it's all great um there's a few things you can do over here so there's these little buttons one of them which is quite useful and you'll see people use quite a lot is there's remote commands that we have so you can see there's Quite a few basic ones, uh, as you can see at the top, and these are kind of the ones that we had for, for the longest time. So like play, stop, reboot, sleep, wake up, change the volume, you know, format the screen, take screenshot, etc. Um, although these at the bottom here, we've actually added these recently. Um, so as you can see, these are quite useful in being able to do things without having to physically be there. So like rotating the screen, for example, is super, super useful. It's something that we had a lot of feedback of, you know, can we do this before we like set up the screens and such like that? So at least, you know, they can kind of be ready for when you know they're installed, which is quite good. Um, same for like the you know the time and stuff like that. Maybe the time is wrong for whatever reason. At least you can just change it on here. You don't. I mean, we don't have to ask the the customer to be like, can you get the remote? Can you change the time? You know, it just take it takes too long, and it's just so much easier to just do it on here. So it's quite useful for that. Um, also, if we click on any of these screens, we'll see that uh, we have you know as I was mentioning, we can kind of edit a few things about them. Like we can change the name. Um, I've just called it this because it's you know, the best reference I have towards it. You can actually take a screenshot of what's currently on the screen as well. And also you have look, these quite a few different controls you can do with the screen as well. Like that's a bit different than the remote controls where these are more, you know, more detailed. Like you can you know, set it on and off timer for the screen, which is super useful. Again, a lot of people use this just to save electricity and energy, especially kind of during these times, you know. Um, so it's quite useful for that. Um, the other things I want to cover is quickly go over the logs. So, you know, we mentioned before about how we can kind of export different things on the screen now. Um, so for example, you can see there's four here. So we actually have like user operations. So these are pretty much just kind of what ha what's happening with the user account. Obviously, if you're like the, you know, the, head, the admin of, of the organization, you can kind of see what all the end users, all the customers are doing as well. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of what's happening there. Um, we also have play monitoring, which shows you what's currently happening with the screen. So you can see here, for example, the one that we did, the freestanding 50 inch, you know, downloaded this content here and, you know, it's, it's pretty much telling me exactly kind of what happened. Um, also, a thing that, you know, we wanted to touch on, we, we've been trying to sort out recently, is like the analytics. So you can see here, we actually have the ability. I, I haven't put it on here yet, unfortunately, but you can see that it's there, which allows us to, you know, see what content is being played on the screen at the time. Um, and that just gives you so much, you know, better information, especially with like end users that wish to use it for like, you know, advertise content and stuff. And they want to know the exact time that the content's been on there, how many times, etc. So it's really useful for, for that kind of thing. Same for, same for the seconds, except it's, you know, more detailed in, in the specifics. Um, and the last thing I want to touch on is the settings area here. So um, you can see if I go to organization, you can see I have one called All Webinar. So what this means is, this is the organization that this account is tied to. 
So right now, um, if I log into this account, you know, this is this is what I'll see. But you can see underneath this kind of like a, a branching tree effects. We actually have meeting room and showroom. So what I mean by what, what it means by that is these would be kind of the individual customers organizations. And it allows you to actually be able to manage these on, on, on like a, you know, a more personal level. So what I mean by that is because you're logging into this account here, you can you can have access to, you know, whatever screens that you've moved into your organizations or end users accounts. Um, and you can kind of do things, you know, maybe you can check their media, maybe you can like, you know, do some remote commands, whatever it is. Um, you can kind of do that from here. And also to be more specific with this as well, you can, as I was mentioning, you can add, you know, the, the user accounts for them too. So, you know, you can actually do this for them. So, you know, if, if this is a, a specific, you know, person that you want to create an account for, you can just, you know, fill in all the details of creating an account. Usually you just kind of give their name, et cetera. And then you can just literally just give them the, the you know, the username and be like, well, here's, here's your account. Like, feel free to, you know, edit whatever you want on your screen, for example. One thing to mention here, guys, is um, you've got, as well as Dean mentioned earlier, that you've got a completely unlimited amount of storage space. You've also got a completely unlimited amount of user accounts. Again, other platforms maybe limit you on a total amount of storage space or a total number of users. We try to make our platform kind of as, as open as possible, really, and as, as flexible as possible. Yeah, so exactly. So um, the other thing as well is roles. So um, quite useful, uh, especially with ads, because you can actually add like uh, like kind of granular restrictions to, to, to the user account that you're creating. So for example, um, the one that I'm using right now, the role is called webinar admin, which means I pretty much all the stuff you see here, I have access to, because obviously that's the role. However, you can see I've created a new one called media. So for this role, if I assign this to a user account that I've created, I can actually just give them only access to the media area here. And maybe I can actually be more specific and I can say like, okay, maybe I don't want them to be able to delete any images, et cetera, or, or delete any videos. So you can actually be, you know, super specific in the restrictions that you give to, to, to customers and what they need really. So like, you know, we, for example, we have the touch playlist on here. If the, if the customer doesn't have a touch, a touch playlist, a touch screen, sorry, they don't need access to this. There's no point in maybe it just confuses them more. Right. So, you know, if they don't need to see those things, it just kind of makes it easy for them. And also, you know, you can actually see, you know, what you've done is, you know, you know that nothing's going to go wrong, really, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, apart from that, the other thing we can do is, uh, Tom was mentioning earlier, we can't, obviously, you know, you can change the color scheme. So this is kind of useful for, you know, uh, end users or, or you, for example, just to make it kind of, you know, be your own sort of, uh, you know, your own color scheme and such, basically. And you can see the, uh, the image up here called My Signage Portal. So you can actually change that as well. If you go to User Center, you literally can just, Take an image you can see here's like the specific size that'll kind of fit it the most and you can literally just put your organization there your brand and then you know this will fit your you know your theme a lot more and your end users will be able to kind of see that instead of it just being like generic my signage portal that makes sense um i think that's pretty much it unless you have you yeah i think uh, thanks dean i think dean you've done a really good job at um obviously showing everything in in, in quite a short amount of time um dean's dean's session there kind of lasted around half an hour Normally, we'd probably spend 40 minutes to an hour um, going through. So there might be some sections that we're kind of, you know, whiz through a little bit. Um, but again, guys, if you if you do want us to set up a separate session, an individual one, we can do that. That's not a problem. Or if there's something specific that you'd want to know more about, again, we can set up a session. We can answer any questions. Um, but what I'd like to do now at this point, guys, is just um, basically open things up um and ask to see if anyone's got any any questions um about the cms about the functions about the, the you know the development anything at all um so i'd like to kind of open things up um well i'll start by looking at the chat there's i think there's a few comments in the chat yeah i think bolly's been managing those quite well anyway <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll just see if there's anything that's um, outstanding. If you don't mind, Thomas, can you show us how, how easy to edit playlist? That's James' first question. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I'll just close that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so basically, whenever you create a, a playlist, as I was mentioning, if you go to program playlist here, you can actually see that all everything that you you know you create actually gets stored and you can kind of manage things from here as well in that in that case actually i'm going to delete these because these are just complete duplicates that we've created um, and you can see how you know we have the ability to kind of do that 
And you can see on the left here, this is the one we created earlier called webinar playlist. So this is the one we, you know, we just did through template. You know, if we ever wanted to change anything on here, we can just simply just go into this and then edit what we need to edit. So as I was saying, if you wanted to change this number here, or you wanted to change the text at the bottom or whatever it is, you know, maybe the images can be changed as well. It's something new that you've added. You can do that on here. And all you would need to do from that point is just press save at the top, uh, wait for it to save after you've done all your changes. And then pretty much just press publish and do exactly the same as before. So you just choose the screen. So in this case, we'll choose freestanding and then press publish at the top. And that's pretty much how you would you know, ch change the, the playlist if you ever wanted to do that. James, I hope that Thank answers you. the question. Yeah, i uh, also say a very interesting question from Mike. I think, uh, sorry, uh, from Thomas first one is uh, he want to display, if you read the question, uh, Thomas, if I, uh, you want to explain your question or, or you want me to read out? I can explain it. Um, so yeah. we have uh, multiple locations and we want to have one standard playlist on all the locations in addition to one unique video on each location. So the question uh, yeah. is, can we do oh, this without oh. having to create a, a, a full playlist with a small difference between every location? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if I go back to where I was, uh, yeah. So if we take this place example, for example, and we say like we want to publish this to all the screens, this is just the what the one that we want to do. If we press publish, you know, whatever changes we want to make, we can do those first. Um, now, before we just chose one screen, but if we've chose all of them, you can actually see that we kind of you know choose them all from here. So we could do that as example. Press publish, and then that will kind of publish to every screen. It'll publish to everyone behind me. However, you mentioned that you want an individual video for sort of each area. So what we would do in this case, so we would do this first, that's fine. We'll close this. And then let's say we go, what we do instead is if we go into rapid, we can use that as an example. Obviously we already have the video kind of set up here as a template. So if we choose that, press next. Uh, what we can do is we could say, this is like, you know, area one. We could put our video in here. Um, and then we could say, uh, let's just use this as an example, this image here. What we can do is we can press next like so. And then what we do is we'll pick that screen specifically. So let's say this is this is area one. So we choose this, we press publish. And then what we can actually do is if we press previous to go back, all we need to do then is simply just remove what we just added to that part then. Um, and we can actually add something new. So if we go back into this, so all we need to do is just get rid of this, go back onto this, uh, add whatever the new thing is, press okay. Again, press, say, uh, press next at the top. And then this time we just choose the area two for example. Um, and you can kind of just, each time you do this, you can actually change the name because obviously it will keep, you know, saving the, the playlist. So this one would be called like area two, for example. So that's pretty much how you would do that. Um, and that's pretty much the quickest way you, you want to do that. Um, actually, sorry, there was one thing I didn't mention. Apologies. When you do this, there is one thing you need to do differently. Uh, the reason for this is if you do it the way I just said then, um, the, the only thing you need to change is this part here, sorry. So additional schedule. So you choose the area one, for example, additional schedule. So what this will do is um, if we kept it as it was, it would actually just only publish that playlist to the screen and overwrite whatever you put on there previously. If we change this to additional, what they'll actually do is it'll add this playlist onto that screen as, as well. So it'll play the first playlist and then it'll play this one and it'll kind of keep looping them both, with, you know, however long they last. Um, does that make sense with that, um, with that part? Uh, yeah, so if we then change one of the playlists or the main playlist, it would change on all the screens, but the standard video, uh, I mean, the, the unique video on each screen remains. Or... I, think I, know, I think I know what you mean, Thomas. So basically what you mean is, like, say the playlist you've got on that screen here now, you want a, basically a, the same playlist on all the screens apart from maybe one piece of media. Is that, oh. is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. And so there's probably a few different ways of, of doing that. Obviously, you can go in and edit the playlist change the piece of media, then publish it to the new screen. Uh, that's that's probably the, the, the easiest way of doing that. Yeah, well, pretty much, yeah. So oh, like... Another way we can do it, so we have the copy function of the playlist. Uh, uh, Tom, yeah, Dean, can you expand that? Like uh, you can duplicate the playlist, right? Uh, Same playlist. Let me just go back. Yeah, it's just we make changes to the playlist every day. So we don't want to change. 40 playlists every day. 
we we have got that functionality. That function hasn't yeah. hasn't yet been added to the new UI yeah. um, because it's actually it's actually less common than you'd think. If you'd think it'd be a very common requirement, we we work we are adding that function though. So yeah, yeah. You, you essentially, yeah. like Polly said, you duplicate the playlist as many times as you like and edit it however you like. Yeah. Um, but like I say, th there's usually more than one way to do the same thing. Yeah, it'll be a thing that we add pretty much as soon as possible. You're, you're right, yeah. So on the old UI, you can, there's like a save as button that you can do that on. Um, I guess we just haven't added this yet. So we, we can do that as soon as possible. Pretty yeah, much. It's, it's easy enough to do. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. Um, Let's just see what other questions there are. Sorry, I'm not as familiar with you as <laughs> you. Okay. It's quite a lot in the chat. I'm just going through these now, guys. Sorry, just bear with me one second. Save that to one second. You did that one. Oh, uh, Mike. So adding live TV, um, as Bolly mentioned, um, that can be done either through the web zone or obviously through the through the new YouTube zone, which which were were, were almost ready to launch. Um, so yeah, depending on what 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 um, streaming service really um, that, that that you are going to be using, um, somebody's asked how how many widgets available. So um, as Dean kind of briefly went through, so we've got the um, obviously the the in terms of all the different zones, obviously we've got the background image, uh, one video zone, one scrolling text zone, four uh, image zones. Um, one time, one date, one weather, uh, one uh, web zone, as many um, static zone, uh, static text zones as you like. Um, I think up to a hundred um, uh, uh, transparent zones. The new YouTube zone when that's when that's uh, finished. Have I missed any off? Oh, the logo zone. The logo. Yeah. yeah. So that that lists all the different zones there. Um, Mike has asked: Is the new interface live now? Uh, the end users still have to access the old. Okay, so yeah, so if you still want access to the old UI uh, for the foreseeable future, at least that's that's going to be available. We understand that some customers aren't going to want to have to relearn a, an interface, um, especially if they've just got one screen that they update. You know, every six months, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, so the the new user interface is live now, Mike. Um, so as Dean mentioned at the start, when you log in now, you are taken directly to the new UI. It's easy enough in the top right hand corner. There's an option to switch uh, to the to the classic UI, um, so anyone can use both still. Um, there's also been a question about 4K. Um, so at the moment, the, the platform itself only supports up to HD. Uh, again, this is something that we've got in development. Uh, but again, it, the, the requirement for it is actually a lot less um, le less regular than, than you would think, um, based on the the. the the lack of 4K content available and, and how much it costs to produce that content. Um, but yeah, if, if, that being said, guys, if you are working on a 4K project, let us know. Obviously, we, we can still cater to, to, to the requirements um, in some other way. Uh, so Tony's asked, if a customer enters support requests directly from the interface, we are able to see whose customer they are and respond to them as if you were us. Yes, Tony, we can. Uh, we tend to, uh, we, I mean, we, we do that anyway. Um, and we, we obviously do things from either a mobile phone or, or, or a, a plain label email address that isn't related to all C. Um, so yeah, that, that, is, that is the way we, we tend to handle things. Um, and then like I say, tend to just kind of let you guys know once it's all sorted. Uh, if you want us to handle things in a different way, please get in touch and, and let us know. We're more than happy to do that. Um, We've asked about file formats. Again, if, if, you, if you go to the FAQ section of the website, uh, there's an FAQ answering all of the, uh, the questions about file formats. Uh, my existing image playlist in classic appear to be non-editable videos in the new version. Am I missing something? I think James, best thing to do there is um, get in touch directly and we can kind of walk you through that. I'm not sure what, what might be happening in that specific scenario, yeah. Um, but yeah, get in touch directly and, and we, can, we can kind of talk you through that. That's not a problem. Um, I think we've covered everything on chat. Um, guys, is there any other questions that anyone would like to ask? Um, verbally or on chat, more than happy to, to field any other questions that people have. Uh, if I can butt in again, yeah, that'd be great. Um, Absolutely, Stephen. 
Uh, thanks for the uh, demonstration. Yeah, well done, thank you. Um, just interested in the screens behind you. You've mentioned synchronisation. I'm just interested in those three. How are you doing the synchronisation on those three? Are you so that that is through our, our CMS. So um, obviously each screen individually has that its own uh, internal media player. Um, you'll also see a similar set situation in the top corner there in the, the, the menu boards, yeah. uh, which is a lot more common in terms of a real life application. Um, so each screen has got the, its own individual media player. Um, so they're not running from a single source through a matrix box. It's a, it's a lot more kind of, um, a lot more cost effective, a lot, a lot simpler in some ways. Um, so um, they are set up on this, they have to be set up on the same network and the way that uh, the way that they communicate with each other, um, you set up one screen as a host and the other screen as slaves. Okay. Each time the host starts its playlist, it sends a command to the slave screens to start at the same time. Now they can be displaying the same content, or uh, like we've done here, they can be displaying different content. So at some point here, you'll see. I'm not sure um, if if anyone wants to switch to speak of you. That'll um, that'll kind of um, make make our screen much bigger, so you'll be able to see a little bit better. Uh, in a little while, there's, there's a video where somebody's walking across uh, all the screens. So the way that we've achieved that, we've, we've started with the original video. We've cropped the display area for, for each uh, screen out as four separate videos. We've published each one to each screen. And because they're synchronized, they then kind of re-stitch back together, if you like, uh, and appear as one big video. Does that answer the question for you, Steve? It does, yeah. Yeah. I just think similar with a, with a, another provider. I'm just interested how you've done it. I mean, the, the the question about 4K is relevant to that, and clearly you're not doing that. You're you're taking the yeah. image and splitting it yourself and putting it on each individual. Well, player. that's it. I mean, and, and, and to be honest, Stephen, because because we're we're taking that route. If you know, really, for a lot of 4K commercial solutions are very expensive. Yeah. Um, this, like I say, this is a way of doing it that's very scalable and very affordable. Um, you know, in terms of um, you know. You can essentially get up to 8K or, or higher, any resolutions possible, um, it, it, you know, in a, in a lot more kind of um, affordable and accessible way, really. Yeah, no, it's good. It's very effective. Yeah, well done. Great. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I think there's been a few other questions in the chat. Uh, what's the smallest screen? So uh, on the ones we've got here, we've got 32, 43, 50 and 55. Uh, behind us just there and the freestanding unit is also 55 inch uh, gary i'd missed a section of this due to a phone call yeah so um gary we will be actually putting the um this particular webinar on on youtube um so so that all our partners can can obviously um can view it um and and obviously your colleagues as well so that's not a problem at all um were there any other questions that anyone wanted to ask verbally or via the chat Still happy to answer any any questions anyone might have, or, or even specific scenarios that you've encountered, perhaps with customers that you'd like like to discuss. When are you going to uh, do the uh, session on touch? Do you know yet, uh, Stephen? It will. It won't be next month. It'll likely be uh, the month after, so in, in a couple of months' time. But but obviously, you know, if, if you found out about this this session, um, you, we'll, we'll obviously be sending out an email shot. We'll be promoting it on our social media channels, on our blog, etc. So. Um, yeah, just watch this space, but mo most likely in a couple of months' time. Great, thank you. Um, okay, Mike. Um, oh, I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm comfortable discussing all similar points. Uh, I know that on one occasion, a client went to all to make a technical inquiry, specific product, all C told the client to contact them directly. Um, yeah, so uh, Mike, that's a really good. Um, that's a really good point. So. All of our partners work in very different ways. They have different end users in different verticals. Um, and they all have different opinions on how they want to um, how they want to present their partnership with Allc. Um, many many don't want their customers to know about Allc. They want to keep Allc plain label. That's that's absolutely fine. We've obviously taken that approach, you know, from day one. Many of our partners, like yourself, Mike, you know, they're, they're happy for their customers to 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 know about Allc. In, in in some cases, they really want to kind of promote that partnership and kind of. Um, use use all C's kind of um, industry recognition, even though we, we don't have branded products, um, use you know, all C's reputation within the industry to kind of give themselves a little bit of a leg up. Uh, you know, from our point of view, any, any way you want to approach that is absolutely fine. But like you say, Mike, as standard, we, uh, we provide all our technical support plain label. Uh, and if any, any of our partners are working with any, any customers and they want to protect those customers, so that way, 
if 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 one of your protected customers calls us or you know finds out about all seal or, 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 or however they come in contact with us uh, if they're protected under under you guys and under our partners we will just direct any commercial inquiries directly back to you guys so if they're asking about pricing or they want to place an order directly they won't be able to do that we'll just pass them to you obviously we don't sell directly to end users but you guys might be working through a trade partner a shop fitter you know so forth so yeah that that's a really good point mike thanks for thanks for that but yeah anyone who wants to protect any opportunities protect any um, any customers more than happy to do that on a commercial level um, were there any other questions, commercial, technical, otherwise can be about the software, the hardware, any, anything at all? Um, happy to answer any questions anyone's got. Uh, Thomas, there's the last coming question from uh, uh, somebody ask, uh, we need a touch screen as well. So yeah. I can also this question, yes, of course, we also have the touch screens hardware from very small size from 10 inch until very large, 86 inch. Uh, as uh, Thomas mentioned earlier, our CMS also offers touch playlist function, which allow you to schedule touch content. Uh, we will organize another webinar, which is in uh, about one or two months time, and uh, we'll introduce that function to you guys. And also this gentleman earlier also gave us a suggestion in the future when we broadcast our event, can we also use the American time zones as well? So first of all, I apologize that probably this will be a little bit harder. Uh, now we are uh, about 2 p.m. in British summertime, probably will be hard for the people in the US, especially on the West, on the west coast probably not wake up yet in the future probably when we do the broadcasting we'll clearly mark what's the european time uh uk time and american time thanks for that uh, were there any other questions from anyone or comments feedback anything at all Okay, guys, if there aren't any other questions, um, we'll, we'll, we'll close it there. Um, I would like to kind of just 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 kind of mention as well, um, if, if anyone's got any questions, obviously you can get in touch with your account manager. Um, thanks for the feedback, Mike, that's, that's, that's really good. Um, if you do want to contact us directly, obviously you can contact us via the email address on, on, on screen there, webinar at allc-tech.com. Uh, our phone number for our UK office is also there as well. Um, any of our European partners or overseas partners can also contact the, um, the, the UK office if they don't have the contact details for the EU office or their account manager. Um, if you need anything else at all, if you'd like to discuss today's anything covered on today's webinar or anything else at all, obviously feel free to get in touch. And um, thanks for everyone attending. And yeah, hopefully see you on the next one, guys. Thank you very much. Great. Okay, Thank you. Guys. Wonderful. No really useful. Thank thanks. you. Take care, everyone. Thank Thanks you. for the positive Thank feedback. Thanks, guys.